Verse two, and I might go to verse, I might go to verse five maybe. Uh, no, I, you can read verse five. It says, so the Lord said to him, Moses, what's in your hand? And he says, a rod. And he says, cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. <laughs> Look at somebody say, handle your business. Handle your business. Handle your business. This story is going to take us over to Timothy, and we're going to tie it in in that, in that third chapter. But the thought of this is awing to be able to pick up a snake and handle that venomous creature. And the power God has given to the believer like Moses to be able to handle your business. It's a difficult time for Moses, but God is working through and in difficult times. Say that God is working, God is working. In, difficult times. in difficult times. It was against the magicians of Egypt and the miracle of God. The magicians in Egypt, the world, and the miracles of God. Second Timothy's, uh, the, that third chapter, verse eight and nine, I'm going to just kind of spot through there a little bit. Moses, I mean, Paul is speaking here and he comes to a noun moment. He says, noun, genus, and generous. We've stood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith, but they will progress no further. For their folly will be manifested to all as theirs also was. So Paul is speaking to Timothy in his day about things that has to be handled and God will give you power to handle the truth and rightly divide it and to speak it to change lives. Moses was facing Pharaoh, we're facing the devil. And his objective is to tear down the truth in the church and to fight against what is real and what is not. He'll have you even questioning whether or not you're saved, or is this all just something that I'm going through? And I'll come out of this in a moment, and I'll be back to myself. Because I have a lot of friends that don't even go to church, and seem like they got more going on for them than I do for me. And I'm always at church. It's like they're getting, getting forally, readily ahead, and I'm constantly struggling trying to keep up. Not so. Theirs is only temporary. Yours is life and life more abundantly. Your blessing will make you rich and add no sorrow. Watch what he says if you take your device and go to the third, second Timothy, the third chapter and look at verse one. He calls it perilous times. And one writer says it's perilous people also. I'm paraphrasing. Hard and difficult times will come. Men will become lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Perilous means fierce, savage. Reducing one's strength to a place of great difficulties. The burden here is released on Timothy to keep preaching the word regardless to the difficult times that he lives in. And Timothy, if you forget everything, remember this, handle your business. The negativity here is speaking about people in this context, and he talks about the degree of things that they're going to be going through. How difficult it's going to be to be around those people. Paul is exhorting Timothy to continue in this gospel. I'm paraphrasing the reading of that first Timothy, second Timothy's third chapter and Brown to verse uh, one down to verse eight, I think it is. Timothy, you keep preaching this gospel in the face of a great increase of evil. You keep preaching it. He calls it in this text of scripture, the last days, the last days, time of the first appearance of Christ and now coming to the second coming of Christ is called the last days. 
Here it is, 2 Timothy, third chapter, verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying his power. This form of godliness are people that characterize themselves to have a self-centeredness about themselves, their characteristics of themselves. They look churchy, they talk churchy, but they ain't church. Oh my God. Maintaining an outward presentation of church, but inwardly I'm far from God. Where a man's heart is, there's the treasure. So I act like my heart is in church, my heart's for God, but my treasure is about all something totally different. Timothy has to preach to this congregation, this, this audience, this, this group that's gathered together. They maintain a speech, a vocabulary of Christianity, but refuse to step into the reality of a Christ-like experience. In the sixth or the seventh verse of, of this context, he talks about the culture of this church. He talks about the, the narrative of the joy and freedom that's in this church, but yet and still they are falsely presented. Paul warns Timothy to watch out for men. They would advance themselves to go into houses of silly women, innocent or naive, leading them away forever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Knowledge is good, truth is good, but you can't stay in the fifth grade forever. You can't stay on oh me, oh my street forever. You got to graduate sooner or later and go to the next street. Handle your business. <laughs> Opens us up to study and learning is good to open and learn and study, but it also teaches us how to learn and study and apply these things to our lives. Just like it be, cause it's just not must be a form of godliness, but it must also embrace and, and, and accept and welcome in the power thereof. When you know that God is going to move, you wait differently. Handling my business, but knowing that God's going to show up and God's going to move, my wait is different. Psalms 46, 10, be still and know that I am God. It brings you to a calmness that it doesn't matter how it looks, I know God's going to work that thing out. He's going to bring along the right person at the right time to stand beside and strengthen the arms and the job will get done. As the old Baptist preacher would say, won't he do it? So every time you think he's not working, he's working. Those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Our history, if not learned, will be repeated. So we're learning here in a moment of history, and we're hoping it was not repeated. Paul breaks into this noun in this text, and he speaks about Jamrus and Jamrus, Jamrus, and how these musicians were conflicting against Moses in bringing their miracles as Pharaoh had summoned them. Go back to Exodus 7 chapter and verse 11 and 12. You see that Aaron now takes the rod, that's Moses' rod, Exodus 7, 11 and 12. And as Moses commands him to throw the rod on the ground, God is telling Paul, you too have authority to move and to overthrow the teachings of false teachers. As Moses did this, now you're going to have to do this. Moses, the leader, Paul, the instructor, telling Timothy, you got to speak what I tell you to speak. And when I tell you to throw your rod, throw your rod. The rod symbolizes the governing power of God, the authority of God that's manifested in the believer. Jamrus and Jamrus threw their rods, but Aaron also threw his rod. The rod is saying about three times in scripture, or the, the particular Moses' rod, 
But I like the one in Exodus 4, coming back to Exodus 7 in a moment, Exodus 4, verse 1 through 7. The chapter opens up and, and God is speaking to Moses here, telling him to go down to Pharaoh and speak to him. Moses believing that God was going to had sent him, but yet fearful of the assignment. Wondering, was he the one really to be able to get this job done? God, you can get anybody else, but don't pick me. I don't feel like it's my responsibility to do this. Threatening, fearful, but yet being called by God. Moses had to accomplish this feat. Handle your business. Exodus 3 and 11, he says, I'm not fit. Exodus 3 and 13, he says, I don't have a message. Exodus 4 and 1, I don't have authority. Exodus 4 and 10, I, I don't have the gifted speech for this. In Exodus 4 and 13, I have no incl inclination about this. This is not even anything that I'm urgent to do. I have no tendencies to want to go and do this and talk to Pharaoh. God gives Moses a divine encouragement and divine instruction, says, I'm going to be with you. My name's going to go with you. My power is going to be displayed through you. I'm going to enable you, and I'm going to instruct you. Don't worry about what you can't do. Worry about what I can do through you. Fascinates me how God always takes the weak things to confound the wise. Because people that don't look like they can handle anything, but they're going to handle their business. Philippians 4 and 13, I can do then all things through Christ that strengthens me. Tell Pharaoh that I am, Jehovah has sent you to him. This encouragement moved Moses to his assignment. God told me to go, I'm going to go. But Moses, before you go, that stick that's in your hand, staff, the shepherd's staff, throw it on the ground. Moses throws it on the ground and it becomes a snake. He jumps back like, what in the world have I been carrying? I did not realize the ability was already in my hands. He jumps back with fear and startlization and said, whoa, 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 wait, 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 what is this? Now, note the text that Moses now is 80, his Aaron, his older brother, is 83, 84, and they're going to talk to Pharaoh. But before you go, Moses, before that snake is there, he said, take it by the tail and raise it back up. Uh, I can see Moses, are you sure <laughs> it's going to do what you said? He takes the snake back up in his hand and it recoils, but it could not bite him. He introduced a new way of carrying uh, things that are fearful to us. The Egyptians only picked the snake up by its head so it wouldn't bite. But Moses said, God told Moses, you take it by the tail, because I want you to see that it's not controlling you. You're controlling it. Took it by the tail, stretched it out, it became a piece of wood again. And here he goes with his 80-year-old self down to Pharaoh's house in Exodus 7. He gets down there and he says, Aaron, just listen to me, little big bro, and do what I tell you to do. Take this stick right here and throw it on the ground. Aaron walks in, throws the stick down, it becomes a snake. Pharaoh brings in his musicians, magicians, and they throw their sticks, snakes, sticks down, and they become snakes. But Aaron's rod eats up the snakes of the Egyptians. You have power to consume what's trying to consume you. But you got to handle, if you don't, you gonna be handled if you don't handle your business. The satanic power was so overwhelming, Aaron standing there and said, what in the world is going on? How did we get in this position? God told Moses, Aaron's gonna be your mouthpiece. Since you say you can't talk, I'll give someone with you that will be able to express what I'm trying to say. But when I say throw it, you throw it. 
When I say pick it up, you pick it up. I pray before I finish this morning that you leave here with confidence that I can throw God's power and watch the devil back up. Look at your neighbor and say, now handle your business. You can't throw what I got to throw because I'm not throwing a little bit of little garden snake. I'm throwing something that's going to really eat up something because I know the devil wants to consume me. So I'm, I'm not messing around with a night crawler. I got to throw something that's going to make the devil bag up. I need about 50 folks and the devil's about to bag up. He's about to bag up in here. He's about to bag up in here. Satan can only imitate parts of God's work. He is a master of imitating. To impress people, he understood that he could measure to some degree what God was doing. But he was looking more at the expression and not the message. So the message was more powerful because it was through faith that God was going to do this. Aaron's rod swallowed up those other snakes. The first blow here is seeing how God afflicted the Egyptians. I'm going to show my power through a rod, through an unlikely means, through something that looks like it's an average everyday stick. But I'm going to turn it into power that can consume the devil. The miracle transformation of Moses' rod symbolizes God's power over Satan. I believe God's turning something this morning to show his power over Satan. Satan thought that his musicians would be the ones that would dominate Moses and he would also make Aaron fearful. But God told Moses that I'm going to send you down there as a God to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh is going to be afraid of you. So here now in the seventh chapter of Exodus, the snakes are eaten up by Aaron's rod, Moses' rod. The alarmness has moved from Moses. Moses now picks it back up and stretches it back out. It becomes a stick again. God begins to show that I'm taking you through this whole journey with my power being displayed in your life. If you throw it, I'll back it up. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. If you throw it, God said, I'll back it up. I'll back it up. If you let it go, I'll work right through it. It may be small to you, but you say, I believe God. And watch me just do something that nobody, I will have Pharaoh backing up from you saying, I got to leave you alone. But your thing is that you got to handle. It's in you to do this and triumph over the enemy. Moses is given divine instructions. He followed those instructions. Later in this same text of, of, of Exodus, he, in the seventh chapter, he reaches his hand into his bosom and comes out as white like leopard. He puts it back in and it's clean and plain like it was before. The Lord says, not only can I change a snake, a stick into a snake, I can take the leprosy and the confusion within a man and bring it out and clean his whole life up. I know you're jacked up, messed up, and wrecked up, but if I get my hands on you, you're going to come out different than what you went in. You're going to stop coming to church and going out the same. You're about to be changed completely by the power of God. Somebody say, handle your business. The test of faith here was in Moses' eyes. He's seen God do the miraculous. He was facing fear, and the instructions were given to him to throw the stick, and he did. And God under, let him see that I got this thing under control, but I want you to feel it. So you take it up. The natural snake itself, one said, is the ability to see it quarrel up or recoil, to see this snake moving, you wouldn't pick it up. But every now and then, God tells you, you go and do it, and I'll back you up. Oh, God, help me. I know you know what I can do, but watch what I can do through you. I'm going to put you out there, scared as you are, but I'm going to tell you to tell that devil, leave me alone. And quit talking to my mind. You mess with me any longer, I'll stand right up in this church in these blue chairs and start hollering. I understand. 
understand what it means to be fearful. I understand what it means to be under control of the enemy. But every now and then, God gives you the power to handle that thing. So I speak to doubt this morning. I, I speak to fear this morning. I speak to anxiety and intimidation. I, I speak to lack and confusion. I speak to anything that's controlling you, you're controlling it. Whatever the devil was trying to do, he only got you more bolder. I just need five people to say, oh, I got it, preacher. Y'all ain't moving this morning. I got this thing. It will not bother me any longer. The governing power of God is in the life of the church. The governing power of God is in the belief. The Bible says as I close in Mark 16, these signs shall follow them that believe. Any believers in the church this morning, then look over your shoulder and say something coming up from behind me. Something's coming up from behind me. The devil thought he was coming up from behind me, but I feel something coming up from behind me. These signs shall follow them that believe. They will accomplish things. They will cast out demons in my name. They will speak with new languages in New Living Translation, and they will be able to handle snakes. Now, don't get mad. I'm just preaching the Bible. Every now and then, you got to handle some that come around you. Everybody ain't coming like a sheep. Some people just sliver up on you. But oh, hold on, baby girl. Let me tell you what's about to happen. You're not going to handle me. I'm going to handle you. You got to handle what the devil is trying to destroy your life with. Don't let that thing rule your life. Get up out your seat and put a smile back on. Say, I will bless the Lord. I, I will give God praise. I will overcome. I will. I will. Oh, God. I've got something bothered me this morning. Look at your name and say, handle it, boy. Handle it. Handle it. Handle it. Handle it. They shall handle snakes with safety. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will be able to take the, play their hands on the sick and they shall recover. Tell your neighbor, handle your business. Throw your rod. Expect God to bag it up. Now the King James says, we will tread upon snakes and scorpions. I need some real faith walking believers to tell the devil you will not come in my house this year, this month, this time. I will tread upon snakes. Look at somebody like Big Mama telling you better handle your business. Don't let that thing control you. You better control it. It ain't cute being quiet all the time. Every now and then you gotta open your mouth and tell God thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You did not allow me to be consumed by my enemies. For the last time, bump fist, somebody say handle it. Come on, get on your feet. I need 50 people to say, throw your rod, boop. There it is. Y'all gonna need, you're gonna need a cart for these, I think. They, I'm serious. Let's, oh, Ramon's here. That's that. Them things are heavy. They are heavy. Hold your hands up. Father, we bless you. I've been going through my personal makeover. And I found myself in a perilous, perilous time.
But Father, you've been faithful and have been a protection. People are still being dug out of buildings from earthquakes. Russia is still invading Ukraine. The economy is reeling and rocking. But you have been faithful, consistent. So I come this morning to put the devil on notice. I'm not backing up. I'm not shutting up. I'm going to get my gratitude up and tell you thank you for giving me power over snakes. Put your hands down. Let me give a disclaimer. We live in the desert and there's a lot of rattlesnakes. I am not preaching this morning for you to drive on your way home to get out the car and try to find a rattlesnake. Don't do that. Don't try to go and try to find a, 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 a natural snake. What I am saying, there are some people <laughs> that move just as that'll mess your life up. Get in and you don't know how they got in. But then God tells you, handle. You take control of that thing. It's a lot I can say, but I'm being very cautious. Well, I was trying to be cautious. But the message is, is I think, in the context of the perilous, difficult times, and a lot of things are moving around us. And we have to be careful and quick to handle things quickly before you let it go on and on, and it becomes something you can't handle. We ended today, we started in Acts 16, with the spirit of divination spirit of the python and how that spirit moved all the way over to the end of revelation speaks about the serpent or the scorpion a serpent i'm sorry and here in our text this morning god is saying tell my people they have the strength and the ability to overcome and to handle things don't allow it to control your emotions, your mind, your thinking, your spirit, your heart. Don't allow it to get that for in you. I want to pray for some individuals and you that are online. Stay with us. I want to pray for you this morning. And I want to just seal this into your spirit that God has given you and I the ability to handle some things. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel good. I'm hearing someone say, I remember the first day I finally spoke up for myself. Finally, I, I just said, no, I ain't taking it. Oh, talk to me, where you at? Like I finally said, no, I ain't taking that. No, I'm not be telling me that craziness no more. I, you, get up, you better get up out of my face. Well, if I leave you, who you gonna help? Who gonna help you? It sure won't be you, and I'll get somebody else, I'll tell you that. I can go on with my life. But when you, when you grow and mature to the place where you can see things coming at you crazy and you say, oh, no, mm -mm. Nope. ain't taking it. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over this August body and those that are online. I'm here the Holy Spirit send someone financially and emotionally back is against the wall. The enemy is threatening bringing fear and intimidation, anxiety and lack and confusion. Father, I pray against anything that's coming up against your people, legal or illegal. 
I counsel it in the name of Jesus. Settle my spirit. Rest my heart. Give me the bold confidence of Jeremiah to speak your word to a brazen audience. Even in these perilous and difficult times, let us see your hand and the glory of your power in the name of Jesus. These hands right here are anointed by God. They have power to lay hands on sick and they shall recover. These hands in the name of Jesus will cast out demons, not ask them to go, but cast them out in the name of Jesus. These hands here will take up scorpions, take up snakes and control them. Father, give me the courage to handle my business.